why, why the mayonnaise? <laughs> so, <laughs> was that a dip for the chips? No, this is this is what what we then did is we went back to the uh, to the loaves and fishes, and we were to cook the dinner, and I was put on kitchen duty to make the food, and they were we were kind of given verbal instructions on what to do, and that was to put the top ramen in. We didn't get a bowl. We got a plastic bag, two plastic trash bags, and we had to pour all the top ramen in there, and then we put hot water in there to cook the the ramen. Um, and so we were like, okay, well, we were kind of confused. So, because we were like, well, we still got this mayonnaise, what do we do with it? Um, so we drained the top ramen um, by cutting a hole in the bottom of the bag, and we were then told to take, the, we had little things of mayonnaise about this big, and we were then told to put that in the bag, and we were very skeptical of doing that. <laughs> um, but we were told to, so we did, and um, we put the mayonnaise in the bag, and what we had to do is we had to mix it all together. So I was on mixing duty, and I was not going to touch it without gloves, and so I found gloves and started mixing the top ramen in the bag. And then what we were told to do was take um, the bags of chips, two of the bags of chips, and crush them. And we put those in the bag too, and mixed that up. And so it was definitely a concoction. Um, and that's what our dinner was for that night with a bag of tortilla chips and... I think they served that at Paragary's, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, so we, we had all this, um, and we got bowls, and we were, we actually found hot sauce in the, um, uh, uh, in the kitchen, so we were like, maybe add a little bit of that to overdo the taste, so we won't have to taste it. The shocking thing was, it wasn't terribly awful. We, it was, it, it was, we could eat it. We, because we had one thing that I was like, thank God, every time I got it, was we had also found some, um, mozzarella string cheese and so we cut that up and put that in there um, and so you get one of those and you're like something edible for once um, yeah. it was we were wondering okay why did we have to eat this it was just awful um, but it was it was so good when we didn't have hadn't eaten anything it was just so great to finally eat something um, how long had you gone without a meal um, eight hours maybe it wasn't too terribly long. I had probably gone maybe like four, five hours maybe. Okay. Um, so it wasn't like I was starving, but uh, we had just done a bunch of walking, um, which many, which actually practically all homeless people have to do every day is walk or ride a bike. Um, I mean, now you brought some things uh, with you yeah. today. You're going to show us, I guess these are some of your personal hygiene things. Well, I've got a couple of things. Um, probably the most important thing was uh -huh. the shirt that I wore. This was my purple flannel shirt for when it got cold some nights um, or even during the mornings. This was my flannel shirt. Um, and you used that as a pillow too. I also used this as a pillow because we, we were not told to bring a pillow. So this was my pillow. Um, this was just the shirt that I wore underneath in case I wanted to take off my flannel shirt. Um, and you had just one change of clothes, right? We had one change of clothes. Um, these were the ones that I wore for, s what days was it? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. For four days, these were the clothes that I wore. I also had a pair of jeans, and we only got one change of boxers. Oh. So that was. Uh, that must have been an experience. Before. Yeah, that was. Um, <laughs> interesting. Okay. Um, and then we were then that was they what what we did was when we got there after we ate the chili it was kind of bedtime. Um, we had a reflection. Uh, we have a nightly reflection was one thing. So we had a nightly reflection um, which we took down in our handy dandy notebook. Um, so, so that's like a diary. Sort of, yeah. We got to, anything that we wanted to write down, 
we put in a little handy dandy notebook. Um, so we have our very first uh, night and this was, so it starts off here with here with what our very first uh, call, call, this is, this was the call, this is why are we called to be here. So we are given um, each time something that was written down by somebody else. So this was from Luke 4, 18 and 19. Um, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So we are given a Bible quote or a, an essay maybe written by someone or just a prayer. Um, and um, and it just says, we have, en we have just entered into our immersion. We may have feelings of excitement, anxiety, and anticipation, and curiosity. And so we are to reflect upon when we first heard about this immersion trip and became interested in participating. So this is kind of not being, we ha we're not able to, at this point in time to really delve into what does it mean to be homeless because we've, we've only had chili. Um, so we kind of talked about it and then they said, they gave us, they gave us this, which was, which is our prayer companion. Um, and our prayer companion was someone who we lived, lived with um, spiritually. spiritually for the entire time that we were on the immersion and now afterwards. So mine was a very inspiring, inspiring story about a homeless mother who um, is trying to turn her life around um, for her child. Um, and it, I, we were given a chance to choose who we wanted and mine was a I chose this one because it was just such an inspiring story that a woman who had lived like this for years um, is now trying to get out to help her daughter and herself. Um, just a very inspiring story and a story that I, when I read it I said this is a person who I want to live the next two weeks with. Um, not two weeks, week, sorry. Um, and so we started out and we had this and this is small enough to keep in our pockets. Um, and so they told us, anything that you want to write down in here, you can. It, that's what it's for. Well, then we, they also told us to, um, if we felt like it, to pick a phone name. Um, and so my name was Cliff Joseph Michaels. Um, We'll get later into why I chose that name, um, but it was a very important why name for me. Why don't, you, why don't you tell us now why you chose that name? Okay, I can. Cliff, Cliff was my uncle who passed away when I was in third grade. Um, he was also my godfather. Um, and he was just an amazing person. Didn't judge anybody. Um, artistic understood the world, um, just a phenomenal human being. A person who was a teacher, served the community, um, passed away suddenly um, from pneumonia. How old was he? Um, I believe he was 41. That was pretty young. Yeah. So um, when he passed away, the community, um, he lived in a very small community, um, the community was just devastated that a man who everybody loved, um, had passed away just so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and he was, they, the community was so um, moved by him. What they did was um, at his school that, that he taught at, he was a third grade teacher. Um, the school where he taught uh, made a mural for him mm -hmm. of all of his favorite things. Um, there was a boy reading a book. There was like a rainbow in the background just for imagination. Um, math, like flashcards, uh, trees, um, and his dog was actually on there who passed away.